now we go to the culmination of biochemistry. It is not enough for us just to know about the structures and reactions and characteristics of uh, nucleic acids, proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. It's also good for us to know the pathways by which they are formed and by which they are broken down. And so that is the process of metabolism or the chemical processes going in within the body and this can go in two ways, in two directions. You start from smaller units or the monomers which is amino acids, nucleotides, monosaccharides and fatty acids and you build them up in increasing complexity to form the larger proteins, nucleic acids, polysaccharides and triacylglycerols or phospholipids. So they are the more complex uh, and the larger molecules or you could go the other way around you have these large molecules, you simplify them by breaking these down into its uh, components. Alright? And so you may be asking, the first thing, is all, it's, it's, it's uh, regular or it's uh, nice to know, it's easy to understand why there is a need for these ones to be formed into this because proteins, nucleic acids, these are very important for our bodily functions as we may have discussed in the previous topics. But what's the purpose of breaking them down back? Especially when you have polysaccharides, you know, well, why do we need to do the reverse reaction? Well, when you actually build this up, one thing we have to recall, or one thing we have to know, uh, I'm just, I, I'm going to mention this for the first time, there is the need for energy. You need to put energy in order for that to happen, in order for these to build up into these. And what if, for example, at one moment or at one point, our body needs energy? We, needs, we need this to be broken down into this so in the hope of finding or uh, getting energy. That's why we need to do that. And energy here is usually in the, in the form of a chemical compound. And that compound is known as ATP or adenosine triphosphate. And so this process of breaking down to form uh, to find energy in the form of ATP or in or, uh, the metabolic pathway leading to breakdown is known as catabolism. And the one that we uh, ought to know or we, we, we think is a more common one which is the building up of molecules or increasing complexity of molecules is known as anabolism. So they must work hand in hand in order to provide us the molecules that we need for proper functioning and to provide the energy that we need for proper functioning as well. And that's the beauty of metabolism. It has to be very well regulated so that everything will turn out fine. All right. So in cases of, uh, in cases of uh, the need for energy, we need something to break down. And usually... The source of uh, energy that we have in our bodies are carbohydrates. So, since the most commonly known carbohydrate is the monosaccharide glucose, I'll use it as an example here, um, we're going to discuss primarily catabolic pathways in general biochemistry. The ab anabolic pathways can wait in med medicine or masterals. <laughs> All right. So, if we, if we need energy from carbohydrates such as glucose, the first step is it has to undergo glycolysis. All right? And when it undergoes glycolysis, it would uh, yield a compound known as pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid. And uh, from this, it could go two ways. If it goes anaerobic, all right? If it undergoes anaerobic, an anaerobic pathway, it will result to... Uh, either formation of ethanol or lactate. The process here is also known as fermentation. However, if pyruvic acid decides to go aerobic, all right, there's a presence of air, all right, or of oxygen, it will now be transformed into a compound known as acetyl coenzyme A, and it will enter. A uh, very cute, all right, pathway known as the Krebs cycle. Wrong color. Krebs cycle, or the TCA, or tricarboxylic acid cycle, in order to produce carbon dioxide molecules. So 
uh, that's the end of it. So what's the purpose of all of this? Where where the, where is the ATP? Wait a moment. All right. In the purpose of in the process of glycolysis and in the process of Krebs cycle, you're actually producing reduced cofactors. Two of them are NADH. NAD is the cofactor. It is uh, nicotinamide. I'll, I'll write it. Nicotinamide. Adenine dinucleotide and FAD is flavin adenine dinucleotide and actually what happens in glycolysis and Krebs cycle is that they are converted to the reduced forms so what do they do like when what do they look like when they are reduced you add H right Adding a hydrogen is also a form of reduction, remember? So this is reduced uh, NAD and this is reduced FADH. And in addition, in addition, uh, we have also other dinucleotide phosphates, alright? Other dinucleotide phosphates. For example, we have guanosine triphosphate. Guanosine triphosphate. Produced from, this one in particular comes from the Krebs cycle. And is that done? Is it ATP? Not yet, but almost there. Because these ones would undergo the pathway of the electron transport chain located in the mitochondria. And what happens is that after this, there would be corresponding ATP depending on what cofactor was used. And there's a conversion scale actually. For NADH, for NADH, we produce an approximate of 2.5 ATP. For FADH, we produce an approximate of 1.5. And for the GTP, because GTP is almost like ATP, it's the same. 1 is to 1. Alright? So, don't ever forget these conversions because we will use them later when we count ATPs after our certain reaction steps or pathways have already been uh, discussed. Alright? And so, that's it for the introduction to metabolism, and we will go straight ahead to glycolysis.